Macho May and Russo Brothers. How do you guys not have any Nova Corp member in a fight against Thanos? Love the movie, but just boggles my mind. Didn't even have to be Richard Ryder. I look closely at that scene again, there, and you will see. There are thousands of people. Yeah, you will see Richard true. Ryder in the background of a shot. Easter egg. Everyone, thank you so much. These were great for, questions. Yes, yeah. sending in these questions. We really appreciate it. And hopefully, you got satisfactory answers. Yeah. And I hopefully you have answers of your own. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. And it looks like Marvel has found their new Nova in the MCU. I know everyone's been asking when he's going to show up since the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie happened back in 2014. And Marvel started doing more space-based movies. There were a couple times Marvel almost wound up using the character in movies, but swapped him out for other characters at the last minute. So we'll break it all down. You just have to picture him coming up with whole new meme formats during all this. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We have a bunch of big stuff coming up like the Deadpool 3 trailer. In fact, one of the reasons why you haven't seen Nova before now involves Ryan Reynolds. I'll talk about that during the video too, because it is kind of funny. Blaming some of this on Ryan Reynolds in a funny kind of way. Nope, that didn't help things. But if you didn't see the news, we just learned about Ryan Gosling meeting with Kevin Foggy about becoming Nova in the Marvel movies. And even though I know a bunch of people have been fan casting him as the new Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider of the MCU, and Marvel will introduce a new Ghost Rider soon, they're setting up more supernatural, darker characters, teams like the Midnight Suns. Apparently, Kevin Foggy wanted Ryan Gosling as Nova, or Ryan Gosling wanted Nova himself, because actually, Marvel does that a lot, more than you realize, where actors like Keanu Reeves, for instance, who people have been fancasting as Ghost Rider, meet with Marvel every couple of years, like clockwork. Kevin Foggy revealed a couple of years ago that they met with Keanu Reeves on the regular, like every couple of years, just about opportunities, characters that he could play. So it's not always the exact same character when you're talking about Keanu Reeves, and it's the same for a lot of other major actors, too. Usually during those meetings, there's characters that Marvel wants them to play, or there's characters that the actors are just fans of in real life that they want to play. We were talking, he was very polite, and he was talking about what a fan he is, and then he just cut right to it and was like, Blade. And we were like, yes. That's how Mahershala Ali wound up becoming the new Blade of the MCU, because like he went to Kevin Feige and was like, I want to play a character, and I want it to be Blade. And Kevin Feige was like, sure, why not? Let's do it. And the funny thing about Richard Ryder Nova is that he was supposed to be in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Both the writers of those movies, Marcus and McBeely, and then the Russos talked about the scenes. His Avengers Infinity War deleted scene would have set up his return during Avengers Endgame in that final battle where the portal scene happens. This was the Russos talking about that. Look closely at that scene again there, and you will see. There are thousands of people. Yeah, you will see That's Richard true. Ryder in the background of a shot. Easter egg. Even though they're being kind of jokey when talking about it, kind of sarcastic, zoom enhanced, he's not in the theatrical version, so you wouldn't actually find him in the final version of the movie that we all see on home video. Originally, what was supposed to happen is that during Avengers Infinity War, they had a totally different opening scene in the theatrical cut. They just opened on Thanos and the Black Order attacking Thor's Asgardian ship, killing half the people, killing Loki, RIP, taking the Space Stone. Originally, the writers revealed what was supposed to happen is that we would have seen the story of how Thanos got the Power Stone from the Nova Corps because when he attacks Loki and Thor, he already has it in the Infinity Gauntlet. After the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, Star-Lord gives the Power Stone to Nova Prime, Glenn Close's character, for safekeeping, and she puts it in deep storage under guard on Xandar. Then we never see it again until it's on Thanos' hand in the Infinity Gauntlet. So according to the writers, what would have happened is that Thanos would have led an all-out assault on Xandar in like the opening five minutes or so of the movie, basically destroyed the entire Nova Corps, laid waste to the planet, and taken the Power Stone. Then he goes after Thor and Loki to get the Space Stone. But after Thanos would have taken the Power Stone, leaving the planet, we would have seen Richard Ryder crawl out of the ashes, being the only survivor of Thanos' attack, and that would have served as the beginning of his origin story in the MCU. They would have had to change his origin story a little bit for the MCU, but that's nothing new. They do that all the time in Marvel movies. In the comics, Richard Ryder originally was a normal human from Earth who's chosen by Roman Day to take the power of the Nova Force, passing his powers to him, then goes on to kill the being who killed Roman Day. It's probably clicking in your minds, like instantly you can see why Marvel wanted to change Nova's origin story in the MCU and use Thanos' attack. Because it's basically the exact same origin story as Green Lantern Hal Jordan, and they'd just done this version on screen years ago with Ryan Reynolds. 
That's one of the reasons why you don't see Richard Rider in that first Guardians of the Galaxy movie because that came out in 2014. It would have been too soon after the Green Lantern movie came out and then bombed. Ryan Reynolds didn't really redeem himself with the first Deadpool movie until 2016, a couple years later. You're welcome, Canada. So blame Ryan Reynolds for Nova not appearing in that first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, but they did have a couple plot elements from Richard Rider's origin story that James Gunn did introduce in that movie. For example, Roman Day, the person who held the Nova Force then passed it to Richard Rider, was played by John C. Riley in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, so you already have some of the characters there for his origin story. But either way, after Thanos destroys the Nova Corps, Richard Rider becomes the sole recipient of the Nova Force, making him way more powerful because the power isn't being divided between a legion of different people. It'd be kind of like Hal Jordan wielding the power of all of the Green Lanterns by himself. He would have gone on his revenge quest that would have culminated during the Avengers Endgame final battle. So when the Russo said that he was in that portal scene, they were half telling the truth he would have been in the scene had they not already gotten rid of his introduction at the beginning of Avengers Infinity War. And part of the reasons why they got rid of those Nova scenes are to, one, speed up the plot in Avengers Infinity War. They already thought that his intro scene was just way too much for the movie to handle because there were so many characters in that movie and it was already a super long movie. Then when they got to that final battle in Avengers Endgame, it didn't make sense to include him because you got rid of his introduction scene, so already people would have no idea who the character is if he showed up in the background. Like, if you're a hardcore fan, you'd see, but most casual audiences would be like, who the hell is that? And to boot, they also wanted Captain Marvel being the person coming in at the last minute during that battle. So essentially, Captain Marvel replaced Nova in the storyline. And that's one of the other major reasons why Marvel's waited so long on doing Nova in the movies, because a lot of Nova's villains have been in the Captain Marvel movies already. They've been trying to push Captain Marvel so hard since Avengers Infinity War with that teaser introduction or space pager, then her solo movie, the endgame scene, her Shang-Chi post credit scene, the Marvel's movie. If you haven't read them, there have been entire books the last couple years about the secret history of the MCU, what their long-term plans have been, how they changed all of them. And back during Avengers Infinity War, when they were still filming those movies, like this was all still in production, no joke, they wanted Spider-Man, Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther, and Captain Marvel to replace the six main Avengers as the new core foundational pillars of the MCU. Everything going forward, like all the Marvel Phase 4, Phase 5, Phase 6 story, would revolve around those three characters. Cut to a couple years later, we saw how that all wound up playing out. Chadwick Boseman passed away in real life. May he rest in power. No more Black Panther the way that Marvel wanted him to become. Sony got pushy with Spider-Man and Marvel almost completely lost usage of the character. Their sharing deal is still kind of tenuous at best. Like they only do it for one movie at a time and a couple of cameos and then they have to re-sign a new sharing deal and that includes Spider-Man 4 right now, Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. So there is no Spider-Man 5 on the books at Marvel yet. Meaning that Kevin Feige can't really make the long-term plans he wants to make with that character. Like, he can't make him a core foundational aspect of the MCU unless they completely have control of the character. Don't want to go on making a whole bunch of plans and having to change those at the last minute because they might lose the character to Sony again. And for whatever reason, Captain Marvel just has not landed with audiences the way that Marvel wanted to. Or Brie Larson hasn't been the right fit for this. There's been talks about her not being super happy with the way things have played out on her end of things. She's a great actress in her own right, but just for whatever reason, it has just not worked out with that character the way Marvel has wanted it to. So it's not like she can exactly become the center of the MCU anymore. So this is why Marvel has been so chaotic during Marvel Phase 4 up to present day. All the stuff with Jonathan Majors and his legal issues are just a recent occurrence that have compounded all the problems that Marvel's had to deal with. So if you wonder why up to recently it's felt like a mess at Marvel, there's just been so many different surprise problems that they did not expect and had to deal with that it's gotten real, real hard for them to do what they want to do. But essentially the Nova character as they'd intended him like way back in the day just felt too similar to what was going on with Captain Marvel the way they were using that character. And because they'd been pushing her character like they wanted to focus on her so much, they just kept delaying Nova's introduction. Right now with the Marvel's movie not panning out the way they'd intended, it looks like Marvel might not make Captain Marvel 3. They'll probably pivot with her character and use her in other future movies. And apparently they decided now is the fine time for Nova. Like if we're not going to be using Captain Marvel nearly as much, there's room for Nova. Here's the thing though, there's a number of different ways you could actually bring the Nova character in and characters that you can use him with in those space-based movies. 
We're supposedly going to see more from Rocket's new Guardians of the Galaxy team that we saw at the end of Guardians 3. James Gunn said that he expects Marvel to continue that team in future movies, but they won't do Guardians of the Galaxy 4. I would say do a Nova movie, just use Rocket's Guardians team during that, pairing them up with him, because they have such a connection with Xandar in the Nova Corps in the movies already. They even just did a Nebula episode of What If Season 2 where she became Nova, essentially. Inside the MCU, she's the leader of nowhere, but she'll come back into live-action movies, too. Karen Gillan said she'll stick around as long as Kevin Feige will have her, so, like, she's not going anywhere. Like I said, though, there are a lot of Nova villains they've already used in the Captain Marvel movies, but going forward, you can actually use Annihilus in the Annihilation Wave, really big character that Marvel's been waiting on. But here's the other thing, too. James Gunn said for a while there were a lot of deleted scenes featuring Annihilus in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, so already they were almost going to introduce the character. Let me know in the comments, though, if Marvel introduces the Nova character, how do you want them to use him in the MCU just in general, like space-based movies, big Avengers-level movies? Just post all your theories in the comments below. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. We have a Deadpool 3 trailer coming really soon. I just did a big video about all the scenes they just released. Click here to learn about that, and click here for that other new Deadpool 3 teaser trailer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.